Hi everyone, this is Ramalinga Prasad Kuppa. Welcome to my channel, Pharma World. Today's topic is ICHQ7 Section 13 Change Control. Let us see the requirement. Section 13.10 says a formal change control system should be established to evaluate all changes that may affect the production and control of intermediate or API. Also, written procedures should provide for the identification, documentation, appropriate review, and approval of changes in raw materials, specifications, analytical methods, facilities, support systems, equipment, processing steps, labeling and packaging materials, and computer software. What is a formal change control system? It is a written down system and not a verbal communicated unwritten system. Such established system is necessary to evaluate all changes. What are all changes? It means that all the activities from start to finish in GMP ambit, all activities between the material entry and the finished product are finished goods out. So all activities of manufacturing are to be considered for the word all. So how the written procedure should be? There should be a provision to identify clearly what the proposed change is. Meaning of documentation is that all the intricate details of the change have to be captured in full. What is appropriate review? It is the responsibility of the user to review the change for the expected outcome by implementing the change. When once the user is satisfied with the scientific justification of the proposed change, the user can approve the change proposal initially and submit for final approval by quality units. Quality unit may add on some more features in their review if appropriate. What are all the changes that need adequate scientific justification? Changes in raw materials, specifications, analytical methods, facilities, support systems, equipment, processing steps, packaging materials, and computer software. One important point to note is on the change in validated analytical methods. Also, frequently there is a need for a change whenever the pharmacopoeial procedure changes from one version to the other. This change also has to be considered as an internal change and justify the change and document the change in full detail. This is how the sections 13.10 and 13.11 have to be understood. Let us examine section 13.12. Any proposal for GMP relevant changes should be drafted, reviewed and approved by the appropriate organizational units and reviewed and approved by the quality units. There is a general tendency that the compliance to GMP is the responsibility matter pertaining to only the quality units. They are the only owners of quality. But by definition of ICHQ7, some total of all activities from start to finish are considered for GMP compliance. So if there are any GMP related changes, it is the user who should draft, review for compliance, and then self-approve before submitting to the quality units for final approval. 
When once the quality unit approves, the change is considered as constitutional and has to be adhered to without fail. No verbal changes whatsoever are permitted when once the quality units approve the change. Let us see the next section, the potential impact on of the proposed change on the quality of the intermediate or API should be evaluated. A classification procedure may help in determining the level of testing of validation and documentation needed to justify the changes to a validated process. Changes can be classified as minor or major depending on the nature and extent of the changes and the effects of these changes may impart on the process. Scientific judgment should it determine what additional testing and validation studies are appropriate to justify a change in validated process. The essence of the change control is very well described in section 13.13. Let us articulate the guideline requirement. Use of FMEA or FMACA tool of quality risk management, the Q9, provides a good support for all change controls. Hazard operability analysis, which is abbreviated as HAZOP, and preliminary hazard analysis, which is abbreviated as PHA, are very useful for evaluating the safety of manufacturing operations. HAZOP helps to handle the potential deviations that could risk the product quality. Read and understand Q9 in totality. The potential impact should be evaluated. Always remember, the evaluation should be scientific and based on the knowledge earlier experience gained. And statistical evaluation has to be done with a minimum data from three proposed runs. Classification as minor or major are generally adequate. There are instances where Additional classification as critical are considered. This classification is suggested if the change is considered as more serious than the major classification. Level of testing and additional validation considerations may be more if the change is major or critical. So, while preparing a change the intent of this section 13.13 13.13 should be un well understood. Let us examine section 13.14. When implementing approved changes, the measures should be taken to ensure that all documents affected by the change are revised. This section prescribes a very important point. The change of the system or procedure should not be looked into in isolation. Let us understand. For example, there is a proposal to revise a step in batch production record. In addition to the revision of batch production record, the change control should discuss whether there is any requirement to qualify the equipment to perform the proposed change? Are there any additional in-process tests for this change? If so, does QC has adequate infrastructure to accommodate the proposal? Is it minor or major? If it is a major change, are there any requirements of additional validations or subject to the revised process batches for stability studies to confirm that the shelf life is not affected. All these necessary documents have to be drafted, reviewed and approved to be current. Another example could be, uh, there is a change in specification of a raw material. The SA value is revised to be more stringent from the previous value of not more than 98% 
to not more than 99%. All the requirements, including but not limited to the following, have to be addressed. The specification should be revised. Secondly, the QC test method may have to be reviewed for suitability to meet the new requirement. Thirdly, the raw material supplier, the vendor may have to be communicated to supply the material as per the new revised specification, which is more stringent. Fourth one is a copy of specification may have to be provided to the warehouse for their records. Fifth is a copy of the specification may have to be provided to the procurement department for negotiating the quality terms and uh, with the suppliers. Sixth, the regulatory agencies may also have to be informed about the change. All these things have to be done. So the change control should discuss all these critical issues and make a provision to change all these things. Section 13.15 says, after the change has been implemented, there should be an evaluation of the first batches produced or tested under the change. This section prescribes that the first batches should be evaluated. Always remember, evaluation means statistical evaluation. So, data from at least first three batches should be evaluated for consistency because you need a minimum of three batches for statistical evaluation. If we can take data from more batches, the results will be more accurate. Section 13.16 says, the potential for critical changes to affect the established shelf life or retest dates should be evaluated. If necessary, samples of intermediate or APIs produced by the modified process can be placed on accelerated stability program and or can be added to stability monitoring program. A detailed discussion should be documented on all critical changes to confirm that the shelf life status of the product is okay. It is within the uh, shelf life period. The samples from the modified batches may have to be subjected to stability studies. You can get more details on this subject of stability studies in my earlier videos titled Stability Studies A Comprehensive Approach. This is a clear prescription in the section 13.16. 13.17 says the current dosage form manufacturer should be notified of changes from established production and process control procedures that can impact the quality of the API. This section is very important. All the current dosage manufacturers have to be communicated on the changes there is a rider the change can that can impact the quality the change that can impact the quality all critical and major changes have to be communicated it is also necessary to communicate the regulatory agencies on such changes and submit the revised documents i hope that you understood well the intent of change control. Try to read and understand the intent of section 13 from 13.10 to 13.17 to get more effective change control system for implementation. Thanks for watching. For more videos, Please do subscribe, like and share. Thank you.